Hey guys, come back. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to handle many-to-many -many relationships inside Filament. So let's get started, guys. Now, if you're interested in one-to-one -one or one-to-many relationships, I already have a video on that. I will have it in the card and in the description. It's also part of the playlist, so you guys can go check that out. So in order to handle many-to-many -many relationship, guys, uh, for today's example, what I would like to do is have a many-to-many -many relationship between our posts and our users. So basically, a post can have multiple authors and an author can have or can publish multiple posts. So we're going to have a many to many relationship between our post table and our users table. So I have already gone ahead and created a simple migration for us. I have named it post user. You can name yours, whatever you like. This is just for testing purposes. And I have defined two foreign IDs. Okay. So one for post and one for user. Now I have already gone ahead and migrated my uh, database. You guys can go ahead and do that as well or use you know, your own application. So that's the first step. This next step, you need to go ahead and define your relationships on your models, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna open up the post model, scroll down. So we need to go ahead and define these relationship functions. I'm gonna copy the category. And for the name of the function, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and name it actually authors. So you guys can see if we use a different name. You can also use users if you like. Now for many to many relationship, you need to use belongs too many, so that's the function name you have to use. And again, a post belongs to many uh, users, okay? Now, last step, you also need to define the table name. I'm just gonna go ahead and add it, which is gonna be post user, all right? And now we have defined our relationship. Now, because I also have timestamps, I'm gonna say with uh, timestamps. Later on, I'll show you guys how to add pivots as well. For now, we're gonna take a look at a simple example. So that's the first step. Now we need to do the exact same thing on our a user's model as well. So I'm going to open up the user's model. Let's scroll all the way down. I already have copied the author's one. I'm just going to rename this to posts. And instead of this user, I'm going to make it a post and everything else stays exactly the same. So that's the second step. We need to define our relationships. Now that we have that, guys, we can go ahead and actually update our filament resource. So uh, you can add basically the ability to add attach uh, posts to the user's resource or you can do it the other way around add the ability to attach authors on the post resource in this case it makes sense to actually add the authors on the post resource so that's what i'm going to be doing it but technically you can do it either way or add it on both okay so this method i show you will work on uh, basically any direction so let's start off by adding the authors on the post resource so i'm going to go open it up I have it over here. So it's inside filament resource post resource. And it's a resource I created on the previous videos. So I'm going to scroll down. We have the section which is a create a post and it's this part, right? So I'm going to for now minimize it. We have another section for our image and the meta. So it's this these two. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this meta and under it, I'm going to add a new section authors and I'm going to remove all the schema inside. So now we should have an empty authors over here. So you can use multiple fields to handle many twin relationship. You can use select, you can use checkbox list and repeater, I believe. So let's go ahead and start off by select. This is the easiest way. You can go ahead and use a select field. And this is the import, by the way, guys. It is filament forms component select. And then call make. Now you can name it authors. So this is going to be same as your relationship name. So if I open up the post resource, sorry, the post model, this is our relationship name. So I'm going to add authors. Next up is you need to define the relationship itself. So there's going to be a method called relationship on select. And inside here, you need to pass in two arguments. So argument number one is going to be the relationship function name, which is again going to be authors, right? It's over here. And then on the second argument, you need to pass in the column that should be used to display uh, that element on the dropdown. Okay, so what column should be used in the dropdown? In this case, I'm going to say name because our user model, we have a name on there. Okay, so let's open up the user model. Here, I have a name here, so I'm going to use that. And actually, this is the simplest way of doing it. So let's go ahead and do a quick reload. Now we have a dropdown and now it is a single dropdown. It doesn't really make sense for many to many, but this is basically the basics of it. Now, in order to make kid support multiple, we can go ahead and call a method multiple on this make. And now we should be able to 
basically select multiple options. I already did a test, so there are some users over here, but as you can see, you guys can go ahead and attach. You can also go ahead and detach them just like this. Okay. And let me detach all of it. And yeah, now you can also go ahead and search. So if I type M, it will go ahead and search the user Matt. So let's open up the users table. As you can see, I have two users over here. So it's that simple, guys, to add a simple many-to-many -many drop down support. Now, uh, there is another way you can do this, and it's by using a relationship manager. So this is going to be similar to what we did on the previous episode where we had our posts displayed as a table. So you can do the exact same thing for many to many relationships as well. So let's go in and see how we can do it. And actually, if you have pivot data, the best way to do it is actually by using a relationship manager. Okay. So now before we go ahead and take a look at a relationship manager, I would like to show you guys a few more tricks. Uh, one more thing you can do is you can also use a label here to change this author to whatever you like. So let's say here I want co-authors for some reason. I can go ahead and use this label method. And if we reload, now we get co-authors. So you can go ahead and use this label method if you want to change it to whatever you like. Just something to keep in mind. Now, one more thing you can do, guys. Instead of select, you can use another field called checkbox list. And this checkbox list, it doesn't have multiple, so we need to comment that out. But it will basically give you a checkbox instead of drop down. So if I reload, this is what you get. All right. So in some cases, maybe this is a better UI for your application. You can go ahead and use... Uh, checkbox list as well. You can also use a repeater, but I haven't covered repeaters yet. It's a bit more advanced, so I'm not going to be covering it on this video. All right, just like this. And again, one more thing you can do on the checkbox list, you can give it searchable, and this will give you the ability to search the authors. Here I can do M and just like that. So that's the checkbox list. Now, the other way of managing a many to many relationship is using the relationship manager. It also makes it easy to handle pivot data. Right now, it's very hard to handle pivot data. You will have to use a repeater. Maybe you can use some hacks to use uh, the dropdown, but it's going to be a little bit difficult to do. So relationship manager is the way to go. So uh, in order to create a relationship manager, guys, go ahead on your application, open up the terminal. And let me fix this before we continue. So open up the terminal and you need to run the following command. Type in php artisan make filament relation manager okay and this command will create a relationship manager a relationship manager is basically a single resource file that allows us to handle or manage our relationships now if you just hit enter it will actually give you an interactive menu where you can uh, kind of type in all the required fields so the first one is going to be uh, what is the resource you would like to create this in and this is going to be basically where you are going to display this, right? So in our case, we are displaying this on our uh, post resource. So I'm going to go ahead and type in post resource. So let's type that in post resource. Next up is going to be what is the relationship name? So uh, in this case, we're going to be using the authors. So I'm going to type authors. Next up is going to be what is the title attribute? This is exactly identical to what we did here, right? But we use name. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and type in name. Okay, now you can also use email if you guys would like. If I were to actually do that, if you guys notice, we will get the email here. So it's up to you what column you want to use. Uh, in my case, I'm going to go ahead and use name. Hit enter. And this will go ahead and create a relationship manager for you. Now, if we go ahead and we take a look at our files, under the post resource, we should have a new folder called relation manager. And inside it now we have authors relation manager, right? This is a new file we just created. And if you take a look, this is exactly very similar to our resources. We have a form and we have a table. Okay. Now I will come back to this in a second. Let's go back to our uh, post resource. We need to register this relationship manager first. So I'm going to scroll down under the table. There should be a method called get relations. Inside this, you can actually register your relationship managers. So I'm going to go ahead and say authors, a uh, relationship manager class. Okay. Colon, colon class. And this will go ahead and register it. So now if I reload the page, they can actually see the authors in a nice looking table, right? So this is an alternative way to using this a checkbox list or drop down. Okay. So as you can see over here, very nice. Now, if you guys pay attention, we have a table over here and we also have the ability to create new users. So these are managed or controlled by inside our authors relation manager file with this form and table. Okay. So what I can do, for example, inside this table, I can go ahead and add a new column of email, right? So this is going to be 
the columns we have inside our users table. So if I reload, now we get email, okay? I can also do the exact same thing on the form as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually copy this from our user resource. So let's open up our user resource. And this is it over here, guys. I'm gonna open it up. So I'm gonna copy the form from user resource for now. So we have a email and password. I don't wanna change the password. Let's just, well, why not? Let's copy the entire thing. So I'm gonna paste it in over here. We do need to import text input. So now if I go ahead and I reload, uh, if I click on new user, we get the exact same form as we do on our user's resource page. And I also have the ability to edit and delete them. Now, personally, I don't like the ability, I don't wanna be able to delete uh, my users on the post page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and disable all these buttons. And you can actually do that if you scroll down under your table inside the author's relationship manager. If you scroll down, there's gonna be actions. So we have header action, actions, bulk actions, things like that. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the create action. So it should get rid of this new user. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and get rid of edit, sorry, delete, okay? So let's go ahead and get rid of delete. I don't wanna be able to delete my users. Not a, not a good functionality. I'm also gonna get rid of this bulk delete as well. Okay, now we have one more create. I'm gonna get rid of that as well. Now, okay, you may ask, okay, what's the use case for this? I wanna be able to attach users. So you can go ahead and add an attach user action here, actually, guys. So if you go ahead, I'm gonna uncomment this, and instead of this create action, you can use an attach action. So this is one that comes with filament. So we can go ahead and use this attach action. And if I reload, guys, now we have a nice button called attach, and if I click on it, it gives me kind of a modal and I can actually go ahead and search my users. So I can go ahead and attach, you know, any user. Right now, both of them are attached. So I would have to basically detach them using this drop down. I'm going to save it. Now we do need to reload the page, unfortunately. But if I go ahead and click on attach, I can go ahead and search for Matt and attach Matt. Okay, same for uh, test. So you can go ahead and add this attach button over here. Now there's going to be a detach button as well. So it's going to be inside actions. So attach is inside attach header actions and then detach is inside this actions. So let's copy this edit button and instead of this edit, go ahead and say detach action. And if you do that, now you have, if you reload, you should see a detach button. And if I click on it, it will go ahead and detach this over here. Now, if you guys notice, it doesn't update our form above. That's just something to keep in mind. Usually you're not going to have this and this relationship manager on the same page. It's going to be either or. So now that we have this, we can technically go ahead and get rid of this authors over here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually do that. I'm going to open up our post resource and I'm going to basically comment this out for now. Okay. Because we don't need it. Again, this uh, relationship manager does the exact same thing as above with just a different UI. So now we are we have the ability to attach and detach users. Okay, guys. So that's how you use the relationship manager for many to many uh, relationships. Now, one more thing you may have is you may have pivots. How do you handle pivots inside or pivot columns inside your many to many relationships? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up the migration we had, and if I go ahead and find it, I think it was called post user. It's over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and update it and give it an integer of order, okay? So I wanna define the order of the authors. Which one is the first author? Which one is the second author? And by default, I'm gonna set it to zero. Now, since I have updated my table, I would need to rerun my migration. So I'm gonna open up the terminal and say, php artisan migrate refresh dash dash step equals to one. So this will go ahead and rerun this, the last migration for us. So now we have this pivot over here. And one more thing we have to do, guys, if you have pivots on your uh, on your men to men relationships, you need to define them inside your models. So I'm going to open up the post model. And on the relationship function, you need to go ahead and say with pivot and pass an array. OK, in this case, I'm going to pass in order order. You will have to do the exact same thing on the user model as well, just to be safe. And I'm going to go ahead and do it over here as well. So now we have defined the pivot. Uh, we can go ahead and actually use it. So first way is we can go ahead and define it on the table. So on the table, I can go ahead and say, you can actually go ahead and use a text column and just use your pivot data over here. So I can say order and filament will automatically figure out, oh, this is 
one of our pivot data, okay? And I can also go ahead and add it on the form as well, all right, if you wanted to. Now, we don't have the, yeah, let's go ahead and add it. I'm going to say order. Now, I'm going to get rid of email, sorry, password and name. I don't think we need them. I don't want to give the user the ability to change the user's email on the post page. So let's go ahead and do a reload. And I would need to attach some users because we just refreshed the database. So we lost all of them. I'm going to attach Matt. And I'm going to attach him. And as you guys can see, now we see the order. And if I click on edit, I actually have the ability to change order. Now, for some reason, I think I copied the password. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. I'm going to make it required as well. If you want to make it numeric, you can pass in a uh, numeric. Okay, so this should be now a numeric input. So if we do a quick reload, if I click on edit, now we have the ability to change the order of the authors. Okay, so we can control which author is shown first on our front end. I'm going to go ahead and also attach test as well. Good. And that's it, guys. So that's how you manage uh, pivot data inside Filament. Now, one more thing you may want to do is maybe you want to attach the order or maybe you have more than one pivot data. You may want to do it inside this attach section here, right? So how do you do that? Actually, Filament has a functionality for this. Now, you would need to go ahead and open up the Filament uh, documentation for this because the code is a bit long. Make sure you're on version 3. Open up Form Builder. And if you scroll down, there should be a section on relationship field, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, it's like panel builder, manage, managing relationships, sorry, yeah. So go ahead, open it up. I will have the link in the description. Now, if you scroll down, there should be a section on pivot. So I'm just gonna search for it. It's called attaching with pivot attribute, this section, okay? I will have the link in the description, guys. You can maybe also copy the code from the video. So what we have to do is on our attach action, we need to go ahead and add this form, okay? Now the code is a bit long, so I personally don't memorize it. I just copy it from the documentation every time I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this form section after the make. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Find our attach action. So I'm gonna add it over here. And you guys probably can guess, this will give us the ability to define a form inside the mod modal, okay? so. We need to import this attach action. And if you guys pay attention, we have a form field over here, a text input. So now for our order, I'm going to go ahead and rename this role to order. And I'm also going to make it numeric. And you can define as many of these as you guys like. Okay, it's not limited only to one or two, whatever pivot data you have. Let's go ahead and save this up. I'm going to format this a little bit more. Let's do a quick reload. And if I reload this now, if I click on attach, now we have the ability to attach the order or set the order as we attach them. Now, right now, I would have to go ahead and detach these guys so I can attach them again. So let's go ahead and click on attach. I'm going to attach Matt. And I'm going to set the order to one. I can attach test and set the order to two. Just like these guys. Now, if you want to make this sortable, all those stuff, uh, you can also do that on the table. So let's take a look at it. I can make this uh, sortable. Uh, same for the order, make it uh, sortable. So all the options you have on regular tables, you will also have inside the relation manager table as well. So I'm not going to be covering them again, guys. So if I do a reload, now we also have the ability to sort these. So that's it, guys, for handling many to many relationship. Uh, you can do the exact same things we did for the post side on the user as well. You just have to kind of swap the names, right? So wherever we were using referring to author, you have to change that to post. And we can do the uh, other way around as well, okay? Show the post for a single user. That's also possible. But that's the basics, guys, for handling many to many relationships. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. If you want, I can go more in depth into this, also show you how to use repeaters. There are a few more things we can do, uh, but this is, I think, the bare minimum you need to know to uh, handle many to many relationships. And it should probably satisfy 80 to maybe 95% of use cases, unless you have a very uh, specific use case that requires something more. So that's it, guys, for today's video. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. As always, like the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel so you get notified of all the latest episodes. And I see you guys on the next video. Have a great day. Bye.